Hi there, this is Emily from the Esri Canada Toronto office. I've prepared this three-part series to go over a workflow that will allow you to make use of your data in some of our ArcGIS apps. So let's get going with data to apps in 60 minutes or less. This series is designed to help you understand, first, ways to make your data available in ArcGIS Online, learn how to prepare web maps for use in an app, and finally, how to build powerful apps to engage audiences. We'll be following this workflow throughout this series, breaking it down into three main steps. And part one is all about getting your layers ready. This means publishing your layers and enhancing and sharing them with collaborators using groups. So there's a few basics to hosted feature layers that we'll go over in the next few minutes. What I'd like to share with you is just how easy the ArcGIS platform has made it to transform a CSV like this into this. I'll be working with fire response data from the city of Edmonton, found on their open data site for the remainder of the series. The first thing I want to do is publish my CSV file to ArcGIS Online. I'll start this process by adding an item from a cloud drive. In my case, the CSV I'm using is stored in a Google Drive. I can quickly select what kind of content I'm looking for, whether that's an Excel file, or maybe I'm looking to add a file geodatabase or a shapefile. Keep in mind that these have to be compressed in a zip file to be accessible this way. So once I select my CSV file, I can start the process of reviewing the data before it's published. I'll start by giving it a title and a tag. The next thing I'll re review are the fields and the field types. So I've chosen to use or to locate the features using coordinates. So my CSV file has a latitude and longitude field. So those are the location fields being used to display my point data. If I were to select addresses, I would select the address field as the location field, but keep in mind that this would use credits as it would be geocoding these addresses. Now the next thing I can do if there are some field types that are not coming in um, properly, in this case I've got this close date and close time field, they're coming in as date types. So I can quickly select uh, the field type, a drop down menu appears and I can change that to uh, the appropriate field type. In this case, I'd like for that to come in as a string. Now, the last thing I can do before I publish is select the correct time zone. So my data is located in Edmonton, Alberta. I'll select mountain time and I can go ahead and publish. We're going to be redirected to the new items detail page and this detail page is an excellent resource for information regarding the layer map or the app that you're accessing. It's good practice to provide a summary, a description, a good title and tag. And if you're wondering what information is missing, we've got this trusty tool here, information, item information. You can select the learn more and you get a list of what is needed to be updated. If it's got a check mark, it means it has the necessary information, but if it doesn't, it means I may have to add a summary, I still need to add a description, more tags, and terms of use. Take note of this detail information here. This uh, tells me that the item is created from a CSV from Google Drive, and I can even select this link to be redirected to that exact same CSV in the Google Drive. So I'll go ahead and select the Data tab from the blue ribbon to view the Layers Attribute table. This stores the data for the layer. In my case, I know I have a field that displays the date and time at which a fire response team was dispatched to respond to an emergency. I also have the date and time at which that same team wrapped up their call. So what I'd like to do is create a new field and populate it with the uh, call length for each of these um, fire events. So I can toggle between the current table view and the fields view. So the field view allows you to take a look at the configuration of individual fields and provides editors 
of the data the ability to configure lists or range of values if that's appropriate for your hosted feature layer. In my case, I'll start by adding a new field and I'll call it call length. The type, I'll change that to double. And then we'll head over to the table view and view this new field. I'll choose calculate from the field options. I'd like to work with Arcade uh, expressions because these offer a flexible way to work with my GIS data. Instead of writing out an expression from scratch, I'm going to head to this function tab and search and select available Arcade functions and populate it with the uh, appropriate field values. So I know that I'm working with date fields, so I'm just going to start by searching date and see what comes up. There's one here that's called date diff. I can get additional information about this specific function and it tells me that this function subtracts two dates and returns the difference in specified units. This is exactly what I'm looking to do. So I'll select it. With this function written out, I can head back to the globals tab and select the appropriate field values for the function. I have access to every field of my attribute table. I'll highlight ending date as this corresponds to the dispatch close field, populates that. I'll highlight starting date, select disp open, and then the age units that I'll be using are hours. I can test my expression to see if the values look correct and if I get any error messages. Everything looks great, no error messages, I'll press OK. Arcade is ideal for calculations that require more functionality than SQL because it provides access to those attribute values and feature geometry. So my records were updated successfully. We'll take a peek and that looks great. My task was to publish the necessary data to ArcGIS Online. However, I won't be the person creating the map. Someone else is going to be taking care of that. I'll head to the Groups tab and create a new group. I'll provide the necessary details like title and tag. I'll use that same tag that I uh, used before, Fire Services. I'll limit the visibility of the group to members only. And seeing as this is a working group, this means that it's an ongoing project. I'm looking to create a group to add collaborators as opposed to, say, a broadcasting group where I'm looking to share a finished product with an intended audience. I'll select under what items in the group can be updated um, or can its members update. I'll select all items. So what this means is that I'll only be able to invite members of my own organization. I'll create this group. And then the next thing I need to do is invite that user who's going to be um, creating the map. I'll send that invitation. And then I have to share the content I want with this group. Heading back to the content page. I can select all the items I want. I have the item that I just published and I also have images that will be used later on as symbology within my map. I'll update its sharing capabilities and share it with the group. Let's verify that these items have been properly shared. Fantastic. In part two of this series, we'll go over how to create your web map for use in an ArcGIS app.